Hello there. It's Thursday at noon. I know it is. Do you remember our arrangement? Thursdays at noon on CFUV. Are you ready to get started? What do you have in mind? What I want to do now is called first person plural. You make it sound excessively attractive. That's what I have in mind. Elizabeth II. What's she doing to you? 
She is fighting me. Is that what you call it? Oh no, I'm a very good man. I'm just a very bad prognosticator. Especially given that I control all aspects of the monetary supply in this economy. You'd think I'd be able to predict better what would happen. But no. Pay no attention to the man behind the economy. Continue your irrational exuberance and spend. Spend! You're listening to First Person Plural on CFUV, Victoria's Public Radio, 101.9 FM, 104.3 Cable, and on the internet, cfuv.uvig.ca. Giving sociology an edge! Transylvania Avenue and told their leader, Count W. Kula, what had happened at the Palace of Consumption. A mysterious and terrible disease plagued the villagers and it was spreading throughout the palace. The spells cast by the great, the great and glorious Greenspan and his sidekick, Mall Security Advisor, the Wicked Witch of the Rice, no longer enchanted the villagers. The villagers were no longer fulfilling their corporate civic obligation and spending money. Count W. Kula was a resourceful leader, and he held his own bewitching powers in great esteem. He decided to cast a spell of his own, and in the evil office, he was plotting his very own speech. Blog! 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 No, that is too dirty. I must cut it down. Long, long, long. That is 
much better. I can't believe I've been reduced to writing my own speeches. Suddenly, Rinsfeld approaches. Master, master, Frank and Cheney wants to know how close you are to being finished with your speech. It's coming along nicely, Rinsfeld. Please tell him so. Yes, master. It was very good of you to bring Frank and Cheney back from the dead. No, Rinsfeld, the doctors did that. When they jump-started his pacemaker, I just brought him back from the Nixon administration. Oh, yes, master. Whitewing Blonde is here. Yes, thank you very much. Send her right in. Rinsfeld, I must ask you to leave for the moment. Rightwing Blonde has arrived. Master, do you mean Bobby Hall? No, Rinsfeld, Rightwing Blonde. She works for Corporate News Network. It is imperative to have a Rightwing Blonde if you're going to run a news network. It's in the charter or something. Now go. Go now. Yes, Master, yes, Master. Hi, y'all. How you doing today, sir? It's just so wonderful to be able to come into the evil office. I just want to tell everybody the pre-designated news of the day. It's very good of you to feed it to me on a daily basis the way you do. I used to envy those competitors to the corporate news network. You know, the ones who used to be able to read just straight from the press release. It just seems so much more efficient to get the news this way, and I do love efficiency. I've been meaning to ask you something right being blonde. What's that, sir? Where did you get that ridiculous accent? Well, you do know that Corporate News Network is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. You wouldn't expect me to sound like Fran Drescher, honey, would you? No, I suppose not. By the way, speaking of accents, I've been trying to figure out what kind of accent you have, but if you don't mind me asking, I'd really like to know what it is. It kind of sounds Yiddish, which is okay, mind you. I mean, some of my best friends are Yiddish. Now, this is the sort of accent you get when you are born in Connecticut, but political considerations make it necessary for you to have to pretend that you're a Texas redneck your entire life. You wind up kind of mixed up, I don't mind telling you. Well, that makes sense. Well, sir, I've heard rumors that you're going to be bringing back that Sandman Insane. Is that true? That's right. He was a very useful ally and adversary for my father. I feel that he can fulfill the same role for me if properly persuaded. Have you talked to him? Is he willing to come back on board? Well, I offered him the usual, the carrot and the vip. He took the carrot but refused the vip. A very bright man, Sandman Insane. I think that he was a brilliant idea on the part of Dad the Impaler, and I'm very happy to see that you're following in your daddy's footsteps so well. If there is one thing I learned from my father, it's that you have to pick your designated adversary with the greatest of town. I hate to tell you this right now, sir, but we're about 30 seconds from air time, and so I want to be able to repeat, I mean report the news. Let's just get that camera rolling. Are you ready for this, sir? I certainly am. Go right ahead. Good evening. This is Right Wing Blonde reporting to you from the evil office. We are really concerned about the tragic happenings that have been going on in that there mall of theirs up north in Minnesota. And so we have come to the evil office to talk to our esteemed leader to get his reaction to what has happened at the mall. Good evening. Look deeply into my eyes. Deeply. Deeply. Now repeat after me. Sandman Insane is evil. WQLA is good. I will go back to the mall and spend like a good zombie should. Sandman Insane is evil. WQLA is good. I will go back to the mall and spend like a good zombie should. Sandman Insane is evil. WQLA is good. I will go back to the mall and spend like a good zombie should. Well, there you have it the esteemed words of our gracious leader. This is Right Wing Blonde reporting to you from the evil office for a corporate news network. How's that, sir? I thought it went very well.
Count Dabucula, esteemed his own powers. He failed to cure the mysterious and terrible disease. Other palaces were beginning to be infected with the mysterious and terrible disease. And spending was at an all-time low. The villagers were beginning to doubt the powers of the great lords and even beheaded Lord Worldcom and Lord Enron. The nobility of the land were afraid and there was chaos in the social order of things. Count W. Kula decided to hold a meeting of the secret society called Compulsive Consumption, Consumption Council, Council, or the CCC for short. This is a bureaucratic government, after all. The CCC always met deep in the dark dungeon below 1600 Transylvania Avenue. Right wing blonde, why is it that you never blink your eyes? It is most distressing. Oh, Rinsfield, honey child, that's nothing. I've just had so much plastic surgery that my eyes are kind of stuck open. It's not a big deal. Of course, it does freak my husband out a little bit. Apparently, I sleep with my eyes open all the time. It is very frightening. It is almost as bad as the master's cold, evil, soulless stare. Yes, I've always admired that about him. lock and a door that obviously hasn't been oiled since medieval times. I call this emergency meeting to order. We will proceed with the roll call. Frankenchaining. Rinsfeld. Yes, Master. Right wing blonde. Right here, y'all. The wicked witch of the rice and the great and glorious green spawn. I'm here. I am present. Wait a minute. The visit of Oz isn't a gothic horror story. What is this all about? I'm a witch. All right, I guess that's good enough. Other android. Working. I thought you were executed by the state of Texas. You cannot kill me. I am a robot. Sandman insane. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, you know, here. Headless Jeb, right here. And joining us by teleconference, Daddy Impaler and Mummy. I am here, and so is Mummy. Master, Master, those are your parents? Yes, Daddy was a spook, and Mummy was very well preserved. Why, because she was a mummy? No, that's just what everybody says about her. Oh, look, here comes Barbara. Isn't she well preserved? It's just something people say. Now to business. Does anyone have any ideas about why people are no longer spending at the levels matching their corporate civic obligations? Because they've run out of money, Master. Ah, please don't hit me again, Master! Please don't hit me again! Rensfeld, you idiot, I want you to be serious for a change. I'm going to go around the table and ask everyone what they think. Headless Jeb! Now that market research is being banned on animals, we can conduct it on Floridians. I'll say too that the people of my state are offered as subjects for any inhumane marketing experiments y'all care to conduct. That's very considerate, Headless Jeb. But unfortunately, the people of your state have been through so many experiments already that they are no longer naive. They're just dumb. Sandman Insane. Yeah, you know, I, I, uh, I've done a lot of things for you guys and uh, I kind of feel you're not giving me the proper respect over here. Uh, I stepped in when uh, this guy Bin Laden died. I, I agreed to be the, uh, the designated opposition for you guys for a fee. Yes, and if I had known that Bin Laden was dying, I would have paid for his dialysis so that we could keep him alive, so that we could kill him. Yeah, well, that's good business. But uh, I uh, took all these weapons that you gave me to kill my own people, and I did it like any respectable businessman would have. 
and you this guy just give me hell for it. What? What? I don't know what else I can do for you guys. I know Sandman and Sane, you've been very useful to us. First to my father and now to me. But unfortunately, the people in the old country are no longer afraid of you. You know, you really shouldn't be referring to us as the old country. Though I'm speaking of my own people. I'm afraid that you are no longer sufficient. We need something else to inspire the proper respect within them. The wicked witch of the rice. What? what did you call me? A witch, a witch. That's what you are, you just said so. Oh, oh that's fine. I thought you said something else at first. I have an idea that I think will work. In pop culture, I have created Pepsi Spears to cast a spell upon the people so that they will spin, spin, and sleep, sleep. I could get another young girl to do that. We could try a 14-year-old this time. And this time we could find one who still has her own rest. I am sure that such a task would be well within your powers. Both your magical powers and the virtually unfettered powers you have as the Mall Security Advisor. But the possibility exists that my daughters would force me to listen to this new creature's music at some point. And that would be intolerable. For that reason, I am afraid we must abandon your suggestion. Right wing blonde! Well, I don't have a lot of ideas of my own. I just don't think very often, you know. But being a member of the corporate media, why well, I'm an empty vessel for the rhetorical fruits of the minds of others. That's all we expect from you, right wing blonde. That's just peachy. A little Georgia humor there. Thank you, sir. Author Android. It is in my programming to acquire power. I want power. I say power. Power. Hydroelectric power. Privatize. Privatize. I recommend we privatize. Been there, done that. That would be an excellent suggestion, Author Android. If we had not already done exactly that. The mall is itself a privatization of the town square. It is a privatization of the very concept of public space. I'm afraid we're going to need something we haven't already done. The great and glorious Greenspan. I have an excellent idea. We need a scapegoat. Someone to sacrifice. To take the blame for all of society's ills, real or imagined. I think that is an excellent idea. I know exactly who we can sacrifice. We need someone to serve as the scapegoat for corporate corruption, who is not in fact part of the financial power elite. I think we should sacrifice Martha Stewart. I like it. I like it. Not only is she outside the old boy network, it would be a virgin sacrifice as well, and thus we would kill two birds with one stone. I like to kill efficiently. I guess it's the MBA in me. But Master, Martha Stewart isn't a virgin. No, Rinsfeld, but she plays well on TV. Oh, and that's a good thing. Thank you.
special Halloween episode of First Person Plural. We've put together a radio play for you that we hope you find entertaining. Stay tuned now to hear the conclusion of A Really Scary Story. sacrificed as planned. She decorated her cell with soil, sticks, and pebbles she found in the prison yard. And she learned to have dinner parties on the 37 cents a day slave wage she made from working as a telemarketer for America on hold time waster. But even with all of Martha's sacrifices, the villagers were still infected with the mysterious and terrible disease. Days passed, and more villagers saved their money wisely. Sustainable growth became a concern for many. Some people were quitting their jobs in order to enjoy life. 
The mysterious and terrible disease began to infect their children with sales of anatomically incorrect supermodel dolls and child-targeted fast food packages including non-toxic plastic toys and toxic junk foods hitting an all-time low. Count W. Kula sank into a severe depression. His achievement of rising from his humble beginnings as the son of the most powerful man in the world to the status of internationally known buffoon no longer served as comfort to him. These were dark days at 1600 Transylvania Avenue. Desperate to regain control over the villagers, Count W. Kula began contemplating the unthinkable. While gathering his thoughts in the evil office, he contemplated calling on the meanest man in the entire land to further his aims. Rinsfeld, where are you? I'm standing right next to you, Master. I'm sorry. Rensfeld, it is time for desperate measures. We must contact the Attorney General, head of the Physical Justice Department. Do you mean? Yes, the Marquis de Witchcroft. Master, there is fear in your eyes. Can it be that you fear this man because he believes that no one is above the law, not even the president? I fear him because he tortures for enjoyment, not merely to improve his financial situation. I find it disturbed. Nevertheless, I must put aside my personal feelings and use this man. He is the only one who can produce the results we need. I feel it in my heart. No, oh, master. What you feel is the stake your opponent drove to your heart after you stole the election. But I have the last laugh, Rinsfeld, because in both cases, there was no goal afterwards. Now you must leave me, Rinsfeld. I am about to use the secret passage to his torture chamber so that I may converse with him in his own territory. Yes, Master, yes, Master. Good day, Rinsfeld. <laughs> Witchcraft! I'm sorry to interrupt your work, but I must speak with you. Oh, don't be silly, W. Kalai. It's not impolite at all for you to interrupt. After all, you made me what I am today. <laughs> I know. Stop reminding me. So what brings you to my sanctum sanctorum, old boy? You are a master of the black arts, and well renowned for your ability to give and receive pain in abundance. Our sacrifice has failed. I want to know where you think we should go from here. Hmm. I have been considering this very problem in my spare time, solely for the amusement value, of course. But it is gratifying that you would come to me. I suggest a legislative measure so far reaching that anyone can be imprisoned for any reason under its precepts. Good, I like the way you think. We shall call it the Patriot Phenotype Act. Anyone who looks as if he might commit a crime in the future is to be punished to the fullest extent and pleasure of the law enforcement authorities. Good, good. I think of this idea our power will grow beyond imagination. 
That's precisely the idea, old boy. We will have unlimited power. We can redefine the phenotype as we wish. Anyone who doesn't spend up to the level dictated by his corporate civil obligations will be redefined ex post facto as having their own phenotype and punished. Right being God, how did you get here? You left the secret door open. I just followed the stairs. It is good that you have come here in any event. The Marquis and I have just developed a new legislative measure that will give us limitless power. You will announce it on the air as if it had already been ratified. People will forget whether it has been passed into law or merely suggested, and they will begin conforming to its measures out of a sense of fear. And then we can start torturing as soon as possible. <laughs> I overheard your Patriot Phenotype Act as I was coming in the door. And I have to tell you that I have a question or two. I want to know how you can reconcile this act with human rights. No, don't use that expression around me. It is intensely painful. Oh, don't be silly, old boy. Let her talk. What? Don't you find this to be painful? Exquisitely. You're really enjoying this, aren't you? Quite. What has happened to you? You are no longer a submissive corporate journalist. My eyes are open now, and I asked you a question, sir, that I'd like to have the answer to. I want to know about human rights. You have contracted the disease. Stay away from me. Don't breathe on me. Human rights. Stop that. Stop that. <laughs> Shut up. I know why you're laughing. I know why he's laughing. He has an ideological preoccupation with causing and receiving pain. Naturally, my dear, did you not realize that one must attend law school in order to become the torturer general? I know how to handle someone like you. You want me to stay here and cause you pain, so I will just leave. Goodbye. My God, this could be the most destructive creature ever unleashed on this society. She could be worse than any gothic monsters I've ever known. <laughs> this is our worst nightmare. We can suffer untold humiliations at the hands of a responsible news agency. Only if our luck holds out, old bean. Cula and the Marquis gave up on the Patriot Phenotype Act when they realized that in order for it to work the way they wanted, it would have to be vague beyond the bounds of language itself. Afterwards, they continued to torture each other, not so much as a means to the end of experiencing overlapping pain and pleasure as to stay in practice. They were rarely seen outside the Marquis' chamber again, 
though they did beg Right Wing Blonde to join them from time to time. She refused. Right Wing Blonde did begin questioning all the nobility every night on the news, and through her efforts, the corporate news network became the citizens' news network. The Palace of Consumption was transformed into a community center. The roller coaster and water slide remained, but many of the stores that sold pretty but insubstantial stuff became meeting places where villagers got to know each other and learned about the world around them. The wedding chapel became a place for community groups to celebrate together. The mall college began to teach art and philosophy as well as word processing and accounting. No cure was found for the mysterious and terrible disease because the mysterious and terrible disease wasn't pathological at all. A basic paradigm shift had occurred that had broken the zombie spell. Soon, even the word zombie was abandoned as an anachronism, and former zombies were instead referred to as the un un -dead. You might think this is the happy ending to this story. Perhaps it is. But the nature of paradigm shifts being what it is, no one can really predict how this story will end. In fact, an argument can be made that the story never really ends. the Minnesotans were free to go back to their pre-purchasing pro-prairie predilections. Hey Ollie, have you found the driveway yet? Oh no, Lena, I'm still looking. Don't look too hard out there, don't you know? You're gonna pull a genie. Okay then. The police state is using its phallocentric organ, the corporate media, to control ordinary people like you and me.
been listening to First Person Plural on CFUV 101.9 FM in Victoria, British Columbia, simulcasted on 104.3 cable and cfuv.uvic.ca. First Person Plural is produced weekly by Dr. Patty Thomas and Carl Wilkerson.
music for first person plural is composed, performed, and produced by Carl Wilkerson. For more information about first person plural or Patty Thomas and Carl Wilkerson, visit our website culturalconstructioncompany.com